Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, is that you? Home to roost, Grandma. Was very hot in the city today? No, not too bad. Sort of muggy. Rained a lot. Rained practically all day here, too. Came down in buckets. Ought to be cooler tonight. How's everything at home? I'm with the matches, Ma. Here you are. Is that a new pipe? No, same old pipe. Bobby all right? Everything at home's 100%. You sound like Claudia. Where is Claudia? Feeding Bobby. She'll be down in a moment. David, why are you standing around smiling like that? Hmm? Am I, uh, am I smiling? You look like an advertisement for a tooth powder. Been a fine day, Mrs. Brown, a fine day. I really do think you and Claudia are telepathic. Claudia's been going around with a smile on her face all day, too. I've been wondering how she'd be. It's really the first day she's been home alone since her play closed. She didn't seem to mind. Especially with the rain, I guess. You know, I was, I was afraid she'd be restless and sort of low. Last week was such an exciting and busy week, and now, all of a sudden, nothing to do. Well, as I say, she's been acting delighted with herself all day. Going around singing, smiling to herself, just like you. And every now and then I've noticed her counting on her fingers, her looking fingers. as if she were uh, figuring out some complicated mathematical problem, but she wouldn't tell me what it was all about. Well, we'll soon find out. We'll drag it out of her. <laughs> In the meantime, Mrs. Brown, let me... Uh, let me give you some good news. I'm always ready to hear that. Well, Harrington sent us a first payment on that freight terminal that we designed for him. That is good news. And Roger insisted that I take a bonus on it. Well, we eat. Oh, we not only eat, we eat caviar and baked Alaska. Hmm? <laughs> Just because you've come into some money, David, doesn't mean we all have to have indigestion. Well, the rich always have indigestion. Now, Mrs. Brown. Here. Here, now. Feast your eyes on this lovely green check. thousand dollars. Take a look at that. Ooh, I've never seen so many zeros in all my life. David, I am delighted for you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Aside from investing in caviar and baked Alaska, what are you going to do with all this thousand dollars? Well, you remember last week, Mother, we decided that we were going to uh, get going on furnishing this house. Mm-hmm. Well, now, Claudia has so much time on her hands. And you don't want her to get restless or impatient. Anyway, why don't we just give her this money and let her enter upon a career of interior decorating? Hmm? I think you're very generous, David. No, no, not at all. This is my house, too, isn't it? I have a right to some drapes. Look at those windows. Wouldn't they look good with drapes on them? Mm, Look at that. Lovely. A carpet. We need a carpet down here. We need a carpet in the hall. Yes, we really do. Some other necessities. I have a right to those things, haven't I? Yes, you certainly do trust, Claudia. You think she'll be pleased, Mother? She'll be ecstatic, intoxicated, drunk with her own wealth. Oh, come on now. thousand dollars isn't that much money. Oh, yes, it is. More than Claudia's ever had in one bulk sum to spend as she chooses. Yeah, if we can get her to spend it. I don't think you'll have any trouble. How are you going to tell her? Do the simplest and quickest way possible. No secrets or surprises this time. This is a genuine gift. David, why didn't you tell me you were home? How long have you been here? Why didn't you come up and say hello? Now, wait a minute. I'll go back and start the beginning. Let's see. Why didn't I tell you you were home? I just this minute put my hat in the garage and took my car off. Bobby's fine. Well, that's good. He ate his whole dinner without a murmur. That's fine. I had a beautiful day. That's fine. It was a wonderful rain. I couldn't leave the house. Is that fine? Very fine. Good. It's nice spending a whole day at home after having practically lived at that theater for two weeks. I guess I'm just a homebody at heart. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, that's right. I'll go and tell Bertha you're home, David, so she'll get dinner on. Don't forget the baked Alaska, Mrs. Brown. Oh, sorry. Baked Alaska? Yeah. From now on, nothing. Absolutely nothing but the best. I have had nothing but the best for a whole year, darling. David, do you realize we're married almost a year? Mm, I certainly do. Every time I look at myself in the mirror, it's a reminder. Two more days and it's our anniversary. I love being married, don't you? Mm, It wasn't as bad as I expected either. 
David, do you realize how rich we are today? You never spoke a truer word. I don't mean rich the way you mean rich. Well, how do you mean rich? I mean, I don't mean the baby and the farm and Mama and you, because that way we're rich every day and every night. I mean rich the way other people mean rich. Well, this is as clear as mud. Now, which way is that? Money rich. Mama? Mama was absolute. We are without a doubt telepathic. You know I'm not interested much in money, but it's nice when you get it in a lump, isn't it? Well, money has a place in the scheme of things. It's not really important, but I know, still... I know, I know, I know, I know. Don't apologize. It uh, comes in handy. But tell me, how did you know? You mean about money being handy? Everyone knows that. No, no, I don't mean that at all. I mean about the check. <gasps> did Mama guess? Oh, honestly, she would. I was waiting to tell you both at the same time. You were going to tell me? Yes. Say, now, wait a minute. Hold it right there. Did you call the office today when I wasn't there? I did not, David. You're talking in riddles again. So are you, my love. Well, I'm going to stop this minute. What I have to say is too exciting to beat around the bank. Well, I'd rather have some news of my own, thank you. Here comes Mama. Mama, do as I tell you. Don't I always? With no arguments, Mrs. Brown, no arguments. Mama, sit down on that chair by the fireplace, and David, you sit there right across from me. We better sit down, Mama. It looks like she's got a whip. Oh, sit down yes. there. Aye, aye, I'm sitting. Claudia, what is all this? No arguments, Mama. You gave your word. I did not. Well, as good as. Now, come on, sit down, Mrs. Brown. Right over there. That's a girl. Now, Claudia has some news for you. David, have you told her yet? Hush up, Mother. Master Claudia has the floor. What's more, I have the check. Check? What check? It came this morning in the mail. Oh, so that's why. Just look at this, will you? A check from the Eastbrook Summer Theater for $100. Ooh, 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 ooh. $100. What do you think of that? What's so exciting about $100? What's so exciting about $100? A hundred dollars is a fortune. An enormous sum of money. Enormous. Mother. You mean they paid you one hundred dollars for being in a play for one week? I had no idea it was so easy to make money. There I was having a wonderful time being in a professional play with a wonderful part and right here in Eastbrook. And they paid me a hundred dollars for mm, it. Overpaid or underpaid? Overpaid. I should have paid them. <laughs> Look at this, David. It's not the money, but it's, it's, it's the first money I've ever earned. Well, I ought to turn you out to pasture more often. I could retire. <laughs> Just think, David, without lifting a finger, you could live off the fat of the land. Oh, it's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful to have a wealthy wife. And a wealthy daughter. <laughs> Little did I know when I gave birth to her some 19 years ago, she'd take such good care of me in my old age. You know, you two aren't taking this seriously. We are, we are. I'm terribly impressed, Mrs. Knott. There's only, uh... One thing that worries me. What's that? Well, how are you going to tolerate me? Well, if you can make so much money, why aren't you going to get very independent and snooty? Well, I am. Oh, you are. I'm going to go right out and buy myself a mink coat to wear while I'm milking the cow. The cow? Which I'm going to buy for you, Dad. Oh, you, you will just much. about be able to afford a quart of milk. And, Mama, I'm going to buy you a pig, a small little pig you can call oink, all oink, your own. Oink, oink, I'll be oink. waiting for this day. Now, let me see a mink coat for me. Two minks, like a mink coat. one on each arm. Uh, I, I'm the one that'll have two minks, Mrs. Brown, both on the same And I'm arm. going to buy a hen for the rooster uh, 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 and a wife for Bluff. Oh, not another great date in this house, ruff, please. Ruff. Cow for David. Moo. Pig for Mama. Moink. And, um, let's see. That leaves you about $99, doesn't I'll it? I'll buy a mouse for Shakespeare. Mm, a field mouse, a house mouse, or a church mouse? House mouse, of course. Shakespeare is a house mouse. I mean, cat. <laughs> well, that reminds me. I'll buy a house coat for Bertha. What about Fritz? Let's see. Oh, Fritz is admiring a new scythe he saw downtown. I'll buy him a scythe. Mm, what about Bobby? Oh, Bobby doesn't need anything. He's still getting presents just for being born. What are you going to do with the rest of your money? Put it in the bank. This is some hundred dollars, the biggest hundred dollars I've ever seen. Seriously, David, it's a lot of money, isn't it? It most certainly is. I think I earned it all by myself. If I didn't want to be a wife and a mother more, I could be a millionaire. You are a millionaire now, and you don't know it. I know it. This is just extra. A dividend, perhaps. No, the baby's the dividend, David. I see. The money is just extra. Maybe I should put it all away and save it for the dividend's education. Now, he'll have one. You spend your money. It's yours. Honestly, I have nothing to spend money You'll on. You'll find a way if you set your mind to it. 
Here, David, nope, you, you, nope, you take nope, it. Nope, I will not. Go I will on, not. go on, go no, on. No, Please stop take pushing it. it under my nose, Claudia. Makes I want me no nervous. part of your wealth. Don't you know that husbands are very proud? Oh, don't be proud of I most certainly will be. I'll touch not a sou of this. Now go out, buy yourself that mink coat, see if I can. Please take it, David. Put it in the bank. Pay off the mortgage. Now, I like the mortgage. I've grown very fond of the mortgage. I wouldn't dream of paying it off. <laughs> then pay off something else. There's nothing else. else to pay off. Now take this check and put it in your stocking for a rainy day. Today was a rainy day. I didn't have any use for it at all. Oh, it's so nice to know that in a pinch I needn't be a weight around your neck, David. No, yeah, I've gotten rather fond of my ball and chain. <laughs> you proud of me? Busting with pride. She's going to get conceited, David. I am conceited. I'm conceited now, and I have been for months. Right. Hey, where are you going? I haven't shown my check to Fritz and Bertha. I wanted you to be the first, but I think they have a right to see it. They too. certainly have. They'll be very proud working for such a wealthy woman. No wonder she's been smiling all day, Mother. David, you haven't told her yet about your thousand dollars, have you? Oh, it's it's not very important. Isn't it? No. We've we've gotten along fine without it, so why make a fuss? You're going to tell her though, aren't you? Of course I am. But not today. No. Not today. Because today a hundred dollars seems worth a great deal more than a thousand. Is that it? <laughs> You know, Mrs. Brown, sometimes, just sometimes, mind you, I think you're absolutely brilliant. Shall we uh, dance? Da 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 dum da dum da dum. Now come on, mother. Da 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 da. Look out the table. Da 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 da. Mama, you are very graceful on my feet. Da 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 da. Maybe we ought to go and vote, Mama. Da 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 dum. When high school youngsters get together, there seem to be two requirements for a good time, coke and music. At their own youth centers, they drop a nickel in the jukebox, drop another nickel in the Coca-Cola cooler, and the fun begins. That same kind of wholesome pleasure can be offered them at home. If there's a radio or phonograph, all you have to do is buy a case of coke, stow a good supply in the refrigerator, and the young folks can play host to their friends at any time. Well, what do you think of Claudia as a breadwinner, Mr. King? Mm, if she were my wife, I'd retire. I'd be satisfied with very little from that day forth. Well, I don't know about that. But seriously, uh, how does Claudia plan to spend her fortune? Eight ways, but the first of them is at an auction sale. Oh, auction sale. Mm. Well, that could also be the last of them. That's why my fingers are crossed. And they will remain crossed until we're home from that auction tomorrow. Well... I'll be here to lend you the car fare home if you happen to need it. Uh, say, there, Joe. Yes, David. Maybe I'll need a little of that car fare. David, I'm sure you will. I'm not going to the auctions. Mama and Claudia are, but I'm not. I know better. Well, you'll get the result when they get home. Goodbye. Goodbye, Joe. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Star, And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.